when the uh, when COVID hit, uh, Joni and I we've been nonprofit, self-supporting church workers as singers, and uh, through the years there have been times we knew we had to tighten our belt because we weren't doing enough concerts and and whatever was happening, or we were sending our kids off to college, and we knew we'd have a huge bills, and how are we going to do that on, you know, whatever's put in the offering plate, you know? So we knew how to tighten our belt, so COVID hit, so we began tightening. I just bought a new car. I took the license plate off, took it to my insurance guy, and said, you know, cancel my insurance, I'm not going to be driving the car. And for a year, my wife and I, we did not realize how hard that was going to be, had to share one car. I had to drive her to work and back every day. It's funny, the things we complain about the most are sometimes God's greatest little blessings because we had such a wonderful year of talking and decompressing at the end of the day and sharing and stuff like that, just sitting in the car together every day. We cut $100 a month right off of our phone bills. We were paying for phone bills for f families, my mom and relatives, and we just, you know, you're not going to get the unlimited anymore. And we, re we, we canceled our satellite and our cable television. To this day, we still don't have in our home any source of, of, of television service that we're paying for. What a blessing that has been. Oh, my goodness. And on and on and on, we got to about seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars that we'd cut out of our budget right away. But there's one thing that we never considered for a second of cutting out of our budget. And that was the three children that my wife and I, for 32 years now, we've been sponsoring children through World Vision. And currently we have three. I wasn't even tempted to reduce it to two. Because 32 years ago, I began traveling and seeing the work, things that every, you wish you could have everyone do. And I guess that's why nonprofits and, and child services, they produce the videos and show you the distended stomachs and show you the, the, the terrified eyes and emotions of parents that can't educate or clothe or protect their children because they want you to somehow get a glimpse of that but it doesn't really work we watch TV every day we see what Hollywood through CGI can even make wor look worse and bloodier and it adds orchestra music to make it even sadder and we still sit there sipping our sweet tea and eating our tuna fish sandwich and pop the next sitcom but the fact is, for 32 years, I've gone to 12 different nations. I've gone to places where tourists never go with government armed guards to protect us going in and coming out. Seen things that have almost pushed me into PTSD, like military when they come back, having seen the worst that humanity can do against humanity. And I made a decision early on in my life this is why God called me to music. It wasn't because God needs you to hear me sing sweetly. He could care less about that. And frankly, I don't need you to think I sing sweetly either. I mean, it's been 42 years. I think I've had enough applause and thank you. You know, you sing good. I do? <sighs> but God has given all of us talents so that we might be in service to other people. We forget that. That's where the talent, what motivates God to give you the talent, because his whole economy is based on this principle of self-sacrificing love that serves. He left heaven to come to serve, to pay for us. The clouds release the rain. They give so that the fields can grow and the humidity and, they, and they, everything's the circle of life. And if there's not giving involved, it's stagnant and it dies. God gave me the gift of music so that I could have moments just like this where I can say, I can't share, shock, scare, frighten, or make you sad enough 
Only the touch of God can lead you to make a decision because it's the right decision. And that is to join Joni and I in sponsoring a child. I tell you, my daughter, for instance, they all sponsor my son, they all sponsor children. She made a testimony once. I never in my life remember going to our refrigerator and getting food without seeing the picture of the three children our family was feeding. She said, I grew up in a completely different emotional environment of what prosperity was because mom and dad demonstrated the balance to that. We are given so that we might give. When the pandemic hit, today, I used to say this two years ago, today, World Vision is feeding, educating, which is the path out of poverty, and providing medical care for $1.2 million, uh, million children. One point, they started 70, what, seven years ago with one child? And God's people, like you and I, have responded to that call, one child at a town, and then the pandemic hit. And then Russia hit. And then gas prices went up. And I pray every day for the staff and the volunteers worldwide for World Vision because they're having to do now the same thing they did before with so much less, and it's only God's miraculous gift of providence that is allowing them to continue on. Nobody, there's been 200 people doing what I do. I was the very first World Vision ever asked to talk about their ministry during one of my gospel concerts. Now there's not anyone. I mean, they're just like me. Concerts, they found other jobs. I found another job. I basically, at age 65, have retired from going out every weekend, 52 weeks a year. I, that's never going to be my life anymore. I've got another job, and I have 32 family members that live in the same town with me. I want to be there playing with my grandkids and all that kind of stuff. And I think I went to Nineveh. I did my thing. God has said, okay, calm down, Steve. We'll let you sing. I sing in a church choir now. Never in my life have I been in a church choir. And I'm loving it. I'm like, I'm like the, the newbie guy, and I'm the old guy in the back row. But so I, I said, I'm going to go do a concert. And they go, boy, good luck. We don't know what's going to happen. We just don't know how people, our minds are filled with fear now. There's uncertainty. What's going to happen? And I want to tell you something. This is my third concert this weekend. I only have seven of these left. And I brought more than double of what my normal percentage is. And I'm saying to myself, God's people have been a testimony to me today. God's people know this world is not my home. God's people know what I invest in shows where my heart truly is. And am I that Christian who is committed to living even, I mean, it's, it's a mystery to the world how Christian people can change their priorities when everyone else follows suit in the same dog-eat-dog, dog, put myself first life. So this morning without any pictures of starving children, without any big emotional appeal, I just simply ask for seven people to come to the back on that little orange table. And it's very easy. Each one's got a little card. It takes you 60 seconds. Put your name and your credit card on there. And you can sponsor as long as you want to. In, if you want to go 32 years, be my guest. If you want to go three years, fine. If you want to go a year and end it, stop. If you change your mind tonight, you'll never have to pay for another month. You will, you will have started it. They're already in the program. They're protected. What you're doing is freeing up funds to go somewhere else. But um, So there's no commitment. It's simply a, an appeal 
for you to take a step of faith and see what happens. It's $1.33 a day. So once you fill that out, put your name and address, then I'd like to, I have some CDs out there for sale, but no one buys CDs anymore. They're better uh, coasters than anything else. I don't even have a CD player in my house. I don't have one in my car. Uh, so, you know, uh, but I'd like to give you a gift CD, anything you want there on the table. Uh, for sponsor, If you want to sponsor two or three children, you can have three CDs just as my gift to you. And let me, in closing, um, share this song that will also give you some visual images, but it's the smiles that I think will convince you that you know, oh, I see why Steve now still wants to respond and still travel when invited um, to share this wonderful work of World Vision. I believe that someone in that great somewhere hears every word. Every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky. so much. God bless you.